Yes, you read the title right. In my opinion, just about every online article or YouTube video which provides you suggestions on which camera you should buy first to enter the wonderful world of film photography is wrong, in my opinion. But before I tell you why, I do want to remind you guys all about the Film February event that is happening right now. Film February is a film photography contest celebration. Um, it's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and this year it's finally come together. It's a collaboration that we're doing between us and a bunch of other YouTube channels where you guys send us one to three undeveloped rolls of film. We develop it and scan those for you with the help of our friends Indie Film Lab at a 20% discount. And then each participating YouTube channel, including us, will pick our favorite role and send an awesome prize to you guys for whoever shot the role. Um, we're giving away a $100 gift card to KEH.com to learn what the other channels are giving away, also to get all the nitty gritty details um, like rules and deadlines and whatnot. Go to FilmFebruary.com and yeah, check that out and come celebrate film in February with us. So if you're watching this video, you're one of three types of people. Um, the first are people who don't shoot film and you don't want to, you never will. You're just bored and you're nice and you watch all of our videos and we love you guys for it. Thank you. We feel your love and we appreciate it. The second type of people are longtime film photographers. This video will probably apply less to you folks. The third type are those who are truly looking um, for your very first film photography camera to invest in. Maybe you've shot film before, but it's been a long time. Maybe you've shot digital for years, but you're intrigued by the film photography resurgence that is happening. Or maybe you have never taken photos with anything other than your phone, and you think that shooting with a vintage film photography camera has a certain appeal to it. You're drawn to the aesthetics of film and the culture of reusing old things and the artistic inspiration that can come by doing so. And if I just described you at all, my hunch is that when you think of film photography and buying your first camera, you're thinking about something like this, um, an old SLR style camera, or maybe maybe something like this, or an old rangefinder style camera, um, something from maybe the 50s or 70s with cool dials everywhere and metal housing, clicky little bits and parts, uh, mechanical shutter rewinds and all of that stuff that provides that ASMR photography experience that you're looking for in your life. And if you've watched the videos or read the articles about which film cameras are great for beginners, I'm sure you've seen cameras that look like these. We're talking about the Pentax K1000 or the Canon AE-1. Those are the ones that um, a lot of people talk about and um, those are a lot like this one. This is my favorite camera. This is the Nikon FE2, um, my favorite SLR style fil uh, film camera. Others of you will be, um, you have maybe more expendable income. Maybe you're interested in like the Leica M3 or um, a rangefinder. My favorite rangefinder style camera, film camera is actually the Roli 35S. It's this little guy right here. But while all of these cameras will make you feel great at the time of shooting to own, to use, to play with, um, you'll probably really enjoy shooting with them. There is a reason why, in my opinion, these are not the right first cameras for your foray into film photography. And the reason why is because film photography introduces many more variables and uncertainties into the process than digital photography does. This is probably obvious, but if it's not, let me make it clear, film photography is complicated. There's a reason why it was much more lucrative and viable to be a professional photographer 30 years ago than it is today. There is just a host of things you have to know to shoot film professionally and they didn't have any help from the internet to get that help immediately. They had to learn it like a traditional trade or craft from somebody else who knew or they had to go to school for it. And all of that or nearly all of that is eliminated today by shooting with digital cameras. But back in the day it was really difficult to just buy an expensive camera and just start shooting and expect to be able to come away with anything usable. And that's not really any different today in in fact, in many ways, it's worse today due to the age of most of the cameras that we're talking about. So let me tell you just a, a few of the things that you're going to deal with um, that are potential points of failure in the film photographer's workflow. They include accidental film exposure and light leaks, shutter mechanism speed inconsistencies, manually focused lenses, clear understanding of 
um, changing lighting situations and how to expose properly, all fully manually, without uh, sometimes any assistance from light meters, or maybe you got some help from light meters but it's slow, or worst of all, a light meter that's inaccurate. Um, film is also quirky, learning the characteristics and behaviors of different kind of emotions and different kind of situations, whether that be black and white, color negative, color slide, when to use and which and why, um, what to avoid in um, certain situations that might give you trouble. Then there's the development side, which lab do you use? How do you instruct that lab on how to process your film and how to scan it? What types of scanning, um, what type of development processes, or even more complicated and dozens of additional variables and unknowns um, if you decide to save some money and develop it in home. And then add to all of those variables the added complexity of time. It takes time between exposing the film and development. When things go wrong, it's difficult to isolate and understand where in that long process you had something fail. Um, did the film fail due to light leaks in the camera or because of a faulty shutter? Was the camera fine? It was just the fact that you decided to develop yourself and you messed up your development times or let some light into the development tank somehow. Did you forget to account for the ASA or ISO change when you put in a different role in your camera? Um, were you using a, a TLR style camera where it's possible to shoot multiple exposures on the same frame and you forgot to advance um, the film each time? Did you load your film wrong so that it wasn't really advancing the roll and you had no idea because you rewound it and you didn't know that your film never advanced and you didn't shoot your roll? Ask me how I know about that one. All of these are just examples of the many things that can go wrong in film photography which have no parallel in modern um, smartphone or mirrorless camera especially uh, situations. It's just those complexities do not exist and they're all going, or a lot of them are going to screw you up as you enter this world of film photography. You need to understand that film photography is simply more complicated than digital photography and I promise you that at some point something will fail somewhere in the process and often you won't know why. And that is the reason why the wrong camera to start your foray into the film photography world is something like this. With these sorts of cameras, it doesn't narrow the variables and potential failure points enough. It actually increases them. If it were me and I w was starting over right now, I would want to set myself up for success and start understanding the variables towards the end of the film photography workflow, workflow first rather than at the front with the camera. Now, I've been shooting um, film for many years now and I have a half decent graph on development scanning, a uh, pretty thorough knowledge of most every major black and white and, and color emotion that's out there. And I have a workflow that's repeatable, consistent, and where my variables are controlled. I'm in a good place today where I can experiment with old vintage cameras and try to figure out what I like and what I don't and be able to uh, diagnose problems when they arise. But for a beginner, that's not a great place to start. If you've ever been recommended a Pentax K1000, a Canon AE-1, a Nikon FE2, an Olympus OE1, all of these cameras. Um, I hope you'll ignore that advice. Yes, those were good student cameras back in the day where everyone shot film when these cameras were new and where you were in a lab with an instructor that could help you control and isolate the variables. But my recommendation to you in the 2020s is to find a camera that eliminates as many variables and failure points as possible. And though I'm sure it will not be as romantic as the camera that you were envisioning, something like this, um, here are the characteristics that I would recommend to you. I would get something more recent, preferably late 80s, 90s, early 2000s from a known and respected brand um, and from somebody who has tested that device and verified that things like the shutter are accurate, that um, the light meter works if there is one, that, um, that everything's functioning, that there's no light leaks. I wouldn't be afraid of something plasticky and I wouldn't be afraid of an electronic situation. I'd pick something up that has um, a battery that um, is modern and uh, that takes care of them as many things as possible for you in a, in a reliable way. The next thing I'd recommend is for something that takes the variables of potential failure points that will probably be introduced um, by forgetting exposure compensation techniques or shooting manually. Uh, meaning don't shoot with a fully manual camera. Um, this is the one I shoot with, which is uh, you can only shoot in automatic or P mode. Um, 
With older rangefinder or SLR cameras, you usually shoot in manual mode and often with manual focus or even difficult, more difficult um, zone focus situations. And those are complexities that you have to keep track of at the same time as many other things. Um, and it's, it becomes a lot to deal with. And it, not only that, but it takes away from the joy and the experience of shooting until those things become second nature. And by the time you get your film back and you have blank frames, it's often been so long that you can't remember if it was because you messed up your settings or if you can isolate it to a development issue. If you shoot in automatic mode, um, as detestable as that sounds to many of you, you'll be able to start mastering the workflow of film photography with fewer points of failure along the way. That means more keepers. And guys, that's really what it's all about in the end, that beautiful film look that you're trying to get. Um, sure, the experience of shooting a film is fun, but at the end of the day, if you don't have pictures to show for it, what good is it? And that's why for me, this is probably my favorite film camera. It's absolutely reliable in auto mode with a stellar light meter and an awesome autofocus. And it's tiny and compact. And yes, it's a point and shoot, but I can depend on it. I can take it everywhere. And above all, it decreases the chances that I will get blank frames or worse, a completely wasted roll. Also, it has an awesome wrist strap, which we are selling, we make here at the Dene and Andrew home. Get yours today. Shameless plug for our fun little beautiful wrist straps. Where was I? So that's my recommendation to you. Get something as new as possible with a reliable light meter, autofocus, and semi or fully auto mode and ease into film photography. You can still find great cameras that fit that description for a budget. I purchased literally a dozen of these. This is the Maxim 7000 Minolta. Um, uh, around 15 to 20 bucks each. Uh, for my color film buying guide and they were awesomely reliable, consistent, cheap, and eliminated variables and failure points in an extremely complicated film photography comparison that I did. My only regret is that I didn't start with these. I made the mistake that many younger photographers do and I started with a dozen cheap rangefinders, and boy was that a nightmare um, when things started to go wrong. Don't make the same mistake that I did then. Ease into film photography with a camera as dummy proof as possible when you've mastered the development workflow and you know a lot about film um, and have shot with it for a while that's when it's great and fun to experiment with all these old film cameras um, yeah but that's all I've got for you today thanks for watching guys I encourage you to go out shoot some film in February but more importantly do some good with your film photography camera and we'll talk to you again real soon